You're listening to Something Cheeky, a collection of podcasts where two sisters discuss TV, books, and movies with just enough reverence and far too many pop culture references. Welcome to Something Cheeky, where we discuss the TV series Vikings. I'm Nikki. I'm Rosanna. While I've watched the entire series, Rosanna has only watched up to what we're covering today, which is Season 2, Episode 7, Blood Eagle. In this episode, we see the vow till death do you part in action in more ways than one. Okay, Rosanna, what was your reaction to this episode? Can I use the word gag as a reaction? Like, gag me with a credit card and put me on layaway. (laughs) This episode was kind of up and down on the um, entertainment... (laughs) <laughs> good versus uh-huh. entertainment evil. There were a lot of good parts. Well, actually, I'll say the whole episode is a pretty good episode, but some of it was harder to watch than other parts. For me, I had about an equal number of ahs and ahs. Yeah. It was, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I covered my eyes for part of this episode. No, oh, I had such a hard time watching because I've been dreading this episode since we started recording. Because I knew I would have to watch it again, and I really didn't want to. Yeah, it was bad. But it's it's important to see, at least for me, the reactions of the characters as it was happening. Because everyone had such a different reaction. It was really interesting. But you had to watch the actual thing happening to get the reactions. Yeah, and it was almost like the spectators were also being tortured. Yeah. I mean, that was torturous to watch. Yeah. What was your favorite quote this time? The quote I chose is the seer talking to Ragnar about Athelstan. Ah. He said, he is physically alive, but his spirit is tormented. He does not know himself. Yeah. I picked this one because we didn't get a lot of Athelstan, but I was happy to have a little check-in with him. I'm happy that Ragnar knows that he's alive, and I completely agree with the seer. (laughs) Athelstan is very tormented. But I think we've been seeing that for a couple episodes. That's what you and I have been saying. He's he's not okay in his head right now. I don't think we heard him speak at all this episode. We saw him when the seer was talking about him. Mm-hmm. And we saw him in the audience at the wedding. I don't think we saw him at any other time. I, th- I think that's true. I don't think we did. Yeah, I remember when I when we saw him at the wedding. That was the first time we saw him in the episode. And I was like, Athelstan, I missed you. Well, and there's something about this, the seer talking about him that gives me a little bit of comfort that we're not stranding him in England. Ah, okay. Because it would be very easy to just say, well, Applestain lives yeah. in England now, and then just never talk about him again. <laughs> so I'm glad that that doesn't look like that's the way the show's going. I really like that even though none of the Vikings, technically, I'm not going to call Apple a Viking, none of the Vikings are in England, we're still seeing all that's happening in England. All of Eckbert's plotting and and Ayla's joining in and all that. And so uh, they're becoming their own solid characters instead of just people that talk to Vikings. Right. All right, let's get into the action this time. We start out in Kattegat with such a subtle choice by the showmakers of Ragnar dismembering a rat. My gosh. Yeah, we started and ended the episode in the same way, basically. I guess. On different levels, yes. But Well, yeah. <laughs> also, they eat rats. Gross. <laughs> hey, you do what you gotta do. I guess. Hort comes in and gets Ragnar to agree to stay the execution until they find an ally. Ragnar says, at least we're still allies, King Horik, almost sarcastically. Mm-hmm. Very sarcastically. <laughs> Horik says he will have his revenge no matter what. Do you think he's going to get his revenge? I don't think Horik is in a position to be getting what he wants right now. I think Ragnar is just a force that he, that's been proven in this episode even, that Horik can't control. Yeah. So later in Kattegat, Bjorn and Ragnar are talking. And Bjorn's mad that Ragnar apparently doesn't trust him since he didn't tell him about the Borg takedown. And it turns out that Ragnar sent someone for him, but he was with... Thorin. Thorin. Her name starts with a P, but they say it like T-H, so I'm not quite sure how to say it. Oh. 
I think it's like Thorin. Okay. You know, he was with her, so he's a bit shamed. And Ragnar tells him to think with his head and not his nether regions. I love the closed captioning at this point. It was just Bjorn sniffs angrily. (laughs) Also, whoever Ragnar sent couldn't have looked very hard because Kattegat is not very big. If they really wanted to find him, they would have. I thought he was in his own house. I mean, he wasn't in the barn and he was offering her a place to sleep. I don't know where it would have been besides his own place. I don't think they looked very hard or at all. I don't think Floki gave a crap about yeah. it. Later, we see Aslog and she's having a difficult pregnancy. Lots of pain. She apparently, we find out, told Ragnar that if he forced himself on her at the farmhouse after he came back, that she'd bear him a monster. Which, I guess, means that Ragnar forced himself on her because she seems scared about this. Which confirms our suspicions all along that Ragnar might actually be a rapist. During that scene, when they were at the farmhouse and Ragnar showed up and he was kissing her and stuff and she said, we have to wait three days or something like that. Yeah. He kept kissing her and she seemed like she was into it. She totally wanted it. No, not like that. I mean, I actually. Know, yeah. So mm-hmm. I think what she meant was she told him that she needed to wait three days and then went along with it anyway. Okay. I really don't like the way that is sounding, the way it's coming out. But yeah. based on the scene that we saw. I agree. I just want to make sure I'm not the only one seeing it that way. And I'm like going to be <laughs> crucified for this assessment. <laughs> You're not Athelstan. Right. She did seem to be responding positively. Maybe there was a scene, though, that we didn't get where she said no. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe the the unrated version has more information here. Oh, that would be a bad part to leave out. Yeah, there's one particular scene in a later season. Maybe this season, but I think it's next season that I heard about. It it seemed like it was going to happen, this, this certain thing. And then... I heard about later that it actually did, and I'm like, that was not in the episode, and I found out that it was a scene that was cut from the American version, and I had to find it online to watch it. Oh. When we get to that point, I'll, I'll link it. Okay. But yeah, it doesn't affect the plot much, but it is some interesting information. It wasn't actually R-rated. It implied some R-rated things, but it was not itself. We get to the Borg, who is locked in this room, chained to the floor. Very dirty. They're not feeding him or giving him water, apparently. We see Siggy pay off the guard, so it looks like she's going to visit him, but then it turns out it's Horik. So not only is she telling Horik secrets and sleeping with him, she's also doing little tasks for him, which is weird to me. Horik takes the Borg's first wife's skull to him, I guess as a peace offering kind of thing, and we find out that the Blood Eagle is the most painful death. It's also astonishing to all those who watch. What did you think at that point about what it was? Because we hadn't yet heard the explanation of what a blood eagle was. I assumed it was torture of some sort. You sort of get the whole opening up, like, wings idea anyway when they say eagle. I didn't know that it was going to be out the back, but I thought the chest would open. Okay. Either way, it's gross. Yeah, I I didn't consider it a spectator sport, that's for sure. (laughs) Borg tells Horik that Ragnar wants his position. Puts a little bug in his ear about it, which is, Horik seemed surprised at that idea, which makes you think he's not very bright. And he says, why would he stop at assassinating me? It's like, like there's no reason for him to be killed. Right. It's not an assassination. This is revenge killing. Those are very different things. It's pretty severe reaction to take out revenge in this yeah. way. I mean, it's not like he's doing it yeah. for no reason. And the boar can't be surprised that if Ragnar got his hands on him, he was going to do something bad to him. Borg proposes a plan that Horik arranges for Borg to escape, kills Ragnar, and then makes Rolo Earl. So he still thinks that they can get Rolo, I guess, to be a pawn for them. Mm-hmm. And do whatever they want. We get to Floki and Helga. Get some big news. Helga's pregnant. Floki is really excited at first, and then suddenly just turns and decides he's going to be a terrible father. I'm not sure why. Do you have any inkling as to what that's about? I wondered if maybe it's the same kind of insecurity he had about the ships. He thought they were terrible until suddenly they were wonderful. I don't know why he thinks that he won't be a good father. 
I wondered if it had to do with something having to do with faith or the way he was parented, you know, his father. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. And really, when Helga comes to him and says that she's pregnant, it occurred to me that it seems like there aren't enough pregnant women considering the time. It seems like everybody <laughs> yeah. should just be pregnant all the time. <laughs> I mean, nobody's preventing it, really. I mean, really. They might be sort of preventing it, but it just seems like people, I mean, I'm surprised it took Helga <laughs> this long, I guess, is what, what I'm saying. Yeah, but we don't know about, like, nutrition and all that. I suppose. Which can have a big effect on it. Maybe Helga's a witch. There's a reason people were shorter back then. People didn't just evolve to be taller. It was the nutrition that got better. Well, whatever led up to it, Helga seemed really happy about it. Yeah, and she finally seemed to get Floki on board, and then he proposes. And all that was running through my head was, it's a nice day for a white wedding. <laughs> Shotgun wedding. <laughs> Floki doesn't want Ragnar to be at the wedding. He says everything here is for Ragnar and he wants something for himself, something for just the two of them. What do you think is up with that? He always seems so happy about Ragnar. I didn't think it was that weird that he didn't want Ragnar there because he didn't want it to be about Ragnar and Ragnar's the Earl, so it would have been. Mm -hmm. But then when they actually had the wedding, I was surprised at how many other familiar faces there were. <laughs> because I thought it wasn't a private event right I was thinking he meant I just want it to be you know you and me and like five of our closest friends or something like that not that it was yeah. that he was just singling out Ragnar but that's kind of exactly what he did yeah everybody was there Auric was even there yeah that stood out more to me than anything else how could Ragnar take that any other way except as an insult and it seems like he did, because he and Torsten stayed behind and just got plastered. There was nothing subtle about that. No. If I would ever use a word to describe Floki, it would never, ever be subtle. We get to the evening's festivities, and Rollo is fighting some dude while he wears a blindfold. Still wins, because he's that good. And he wonders why Ragnar makes concessions to Horik. Because he's the king, Ragnar says, which doesn't mean much. I think what he means is, because he's the king right now. Ah, there is so much happening at this thing. It, we jump around uh, to different groups of people and see so much. And Ragnar is just like hovering in the background, taking it all in. We don't know if Ragnar heard everything or if he just saw. Yeah, I feel like they were trying to trick us about what was being overheard and what wasn't because it wasn't clear. Yeah, and I couldn't imagine that he would actually hear what everyone was saying. Because there was a lot of noise. Yeah. But they made it sort of seem like he was having reactions. He picks up a lot of body language, though. Maybe that's From it. what we've seen before. He catches little looks from people. You know, he noticed when Bjorn just kind of looked at the slave girl, Thorin. Mm -hmm. He notices all kinds of stuff. Except, as we've said, what his wives want. <laughs> but He's really good at reading everybody except the people he sleeps with. I always think of teenage high school party movies like this or like every party in teen wolf ever where it keeps jumping around from group to group and we see all the little things happening that are all interconnected like can't hardly wait oh my god just like that, that is exactly <laughs> a teen party yep. movie <laughs> the whole movie is the party yeah so we've got rollo in one place with siggy and they're kissing and they look very happy and then we see Bjorn following thorin through the room and Torvi is still there, which is nice to see her, Borg's wife. Aslog's being nice to her, even though she says it's just because she pities her. Though I really liked what Torvi said. It is all the same for we women. We just give birth to the slaughtered. And then she walks away and Aslog's left slightly dumbfounded about the whole thing. And we can see that a fair amount of time has passed because they're both very obviously pregnant now. Yeah. And then Bjorn has, has moved away from Thorn is getting relationship advice from Floki who says warriors don't show their heart until the axe reveals it. <laughs> and then Siggy has moved on from Rollo over to Helga, and they're talking about the pregnancy and the wedding and how Floki doesn't think he needs Ragnar's blessing, only that of the gods. So it would have been interesting to, to see if Ragnar had heard that. They were far away, so I can't imagine he could have. And then Siggy moves over to Horik and is whispering in his ear about... She's such a freaking gossip. <laughs> just, 
Floki's angry at Ragnar and blah blah blah. I think that Siggy thinks these secrets that she's coming up with are her currency, but I don't yeah. think they're that interesting. I don't know if it's enough to do her any good, except to make her look like a gossip or a tattler. Or that she has her finger on the pulse of Katagat. She's the busybody of the town. Yeah. And even though Ragnar probably wouldn't have heard what she said to Horik, I think it's very obvious the intimacy between them. She's down whispering in his ear and yet he's not looking at her, you know, like they're trying to keep this whole thing secretive in front of everybody. But then it ends with Ragnar just seeing everything behind his little screen. He looks very thoughtful about it all. So what do you think about all of this? Since he seemed to pick up a lot of what was going on in the room. I think that he is suspicious. I think that people that move into positions of power have to and do realize that that can make them targets. So I think he's suspicious of people that, even in this instance, specifically Siggy and Horik, that are being secretive and that it could be a plot against him. Yeah. So I think he's reading people and planning things to go in a couple of different directions based on what other people do. You know, planning his okay. reactions to their actions. I worry about the thing with Siggy that he saw because if he thinks that Siggy is doing something devious with Horik, that implicates Rolo as Definitely. well. And we know he's, you know, trying to get on Ragnar's good side again and it seems like he's succeeded in that so far. And so Siggy could really mess that up for him while she's trying to get him ahead in other ways. Yeah, and I also wonder if that's part of the reason why Rolo confronted Siggy. Because uh, yeah. he is also worried about his position with Ragnar. And he knows that if Siggy is found to be cohorting with Horik, and then Horik <laughs> stands up to Ragnar, that's definitely going to come right back around and bite Rolo. Uh. So I think Rolo's concerned about that. I don't think he thinks the benefits that Siggy's saying they're going to have are worth the risk that she's putting him in right now. Yeah, and it's interesting that neither one of them know about Horik and Borg's conversation about making Rolo Earl in place of Ragnar. Do you think that if he knew about that, that would change his plan or what he's doing? I'd like to think that Rolo is true in his loyalty to Ragnar. He can't, he's got to know he can't keep flip-flopping. You have to just yeah. stick to his side, dude, or nobody will ever trust you. It's like Canute. Yeah, if he has to pick sides, Ragnar's a good side to be on. Ragnar's, you know, the guy you bet on. Yeah. He's the one that keeps getting what he wants. We get to England, to Wessex, and King Ayla, the gross guy, and his daughter arrive at Eckbert's home to uh, save their country. Not sure from what. Just the Northmen? I wondered about that, too. I mean, I think they're worried about the Northmen right now, but, you know, they think that the two of them against others are stronger than alone. And just because yeah. right now it's the Vikings doesn't mean they won't be invaded by other people also. That's a big world. Yeah. Well, and even other territories in England. We also find out that Ayla's territory is a lot smaller than Eckbert's. So he's not quite as powerful. And as soon as I saw the daughter, do you know what the first thing I thought? Oh, this is what? who Bjorn's going to marry. <laughs> but then, no, that's not at all accurate. So God, that would be weird, though, if Bjorn married the daughter of Ayla, who has this horrible feud against Ragnar. Or maybe Ayla and Ragnar decide to let bygones be bygones and team up against Ekbert. The whole point yeah. of marrying the children of powerful people is to create the alliances that's the whole point of this wedding yeah so it's not totally crazy to think that of course now she's already married to somebody else but that was the first thought yeah. i had when i saw her when Eckbert and ayla get together Eckbert, as always is inscrutable and he always has these big pauses before he does anything or says anything and it's like what's he gonna do now is he on our side or not he seems very changeable that <laughs> you sound like moriarty doesn't he say that? <laughs> I'm so changeable. It does. I mean, that show is, it's the best show, like, that's ever been. 
on TV. I mean, it really, really <laughs> is the best show. It's so good. It has some problems, but it's, I can't stop watching it. It's so entertaining. Every single show has problems. The problems that this show has, I'm so willing to overlook because yeah. of how brilliant it is. Mm-hmm. It's just so good. So Eckbert's in the yard and everybody's chanting God save England for the longest time and it feels so awkward and weird. Eckbert and Ayla are talking and uh, wonder what they're going to do about the Northmen and Eckbert proposes that they have an alliance. We find out Mercy is in turmoil since the death of King Offa and his son and heir was murdered by his sister, which does not bode well for him. Eckbert wants to take over and share Mercia with Ayla and Ayla's worried that Eckbert's just going to turn on him after, which knowing Eckbert, that's a pretty, pretty good worry to have. Even he owns it that you know, there's no reason not to. So he proposes a marriage between Judith and Ethelwulf, and they both seem very happy with this idea. Well, they're not dragging her to the altar screaming and crying, so there's that. During the whole wedding scene, because we didn't get any, like we usually do when two young people are being married off by their parents. I think this is the brand new thing I've never seen before where they don't have the children complaining or being happy about it or having any emotion. We get nothing from the children about what they think about the situation. They just get married. Their fathers are kings. They say you're marrying somebody. They say, well, okay, that's what happens if I'm a prince or a princess. Yeah, we don't even get the chance to have a reaction from either one of them. Which, especially... The fact that we don't get it from Aethelwolf, since we've, you know, heard him before and we've gotten information about him in different scenes, just that we didn't get anything about if he was happy about it or not. It seemed during the wedding he seemed happy about how she looked. I can't imagine they had spoken much at this point. Yeah, but we've already had a scene where his dad tells him to do something that he doesn't want to do and he says, of course I will. Right. So we already know that he's not going to give any opinion about it it's already been told well he gave an opinion at that point and he he changed his opinion once his dad wanted him to but he still expressed it but we just get nothing at all from either one i was expecting the wedding scene (laughs) from ever after (laughs) that what the spanish princess or whatever she was is up there and she's just sobbing while she's saying her vows and then the prince started laughing because it was so ridiculous (laughs) We did not get that. I was sad we didn't get any crazy, hilarious wedding scene, unfortunately. Or that no one ran in to object like every romantic comedy ever. Dustin Hoffman was not at the window in the background. I'm actually kind of glad that we didn't have any wedding drama because this is a business arrangement. It would have been silly for there to be any emotions. That's true. That's a good point. And it turns into a double wedding. We get that wedding and at the same time, it's interspersed with scenes from floki and helga's wedding which before this happened floki dug up his father to get his father's sword i don't know if this is a common custom to just not keep the sword when your father dies maybe he just never thought he would get married and need it floki's just weird it's a very strange pretty thing morbid. to do why would you bury a sword i know that that's a thing that historically people have done they bury things with people but for one thing i think that's dumb to bury things with people. And another thing, a sword? <laughs> Those are expensive and hard to make and useful and a lot of things. They should you should keep the sword. That's like burying somebody with like a bunch of money. What what? What? Why? <laughs> or nice jewelry. Yeah, that, that is always a weird thing. Put it on for the for the wake, but after that, no. Yeah. Helga shows up for the wedding on this. I I, I was just thinking mermaids or sirens. To me, I got, like, Woodstock vibes. Just, like, 70s, peace and love, flowers, and wavy <laughs> long hair. And I liked the juxtaposition of the formal wedding vows in Essex and the sword trading and swearing to the gods in Norway. It was really fun. And such a difference in the emotion level in these weddings. I mean, one is a business arrangement, like you said, and one is a marriage for love. And they're just so joyous at the Viking wedding. Versus the stoicism of the English wedding. My wedding was not stoic. <laughs> Mine wasn't either. We get back to the Great Hall and Katagat and Torsten and Ragnar. Super drunk. Throwing knives and <laughs> shooting arrows at each it's other. It's the best activity to do when you're drunk. Oh, yeah. 
and almost killed the poor messenger when Ragnar shot the arrow through the cup on Torsten's head and it went to the wall behind him right as they were opening the yeah. door. Rolla was not amused by this situation at also, all. Also, that would have been horrible if they killed that guy. For a yeah. lot of reasons. Very literal shoot the messenger <laughs> yeah. situation. You're never supposed to shoot the messenger when the messenger has good news. That's not how that works. <laughs> Very mysterious news because we find out that Earl Inkstad will ally with Ragnar, has many ships and men, but no one's ever heard of Earl Inkstad because Earl Inkstad <laughs> is an invention. It's a pseudonym? Yeah. I kept hoping it would spell something backwards and it doesn't. That's me. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah, that's not a word. What's Daxgigny? Ingstad no, backwards? No, it should have been Lagertha backwards. What would that spell? I can't I can't do things without writing them down backwards. <laughs> I just realized, though, they don't have a written language. Oh, that's a good point. So you can't spell it backwards because it's not spelled. Lagertha. Af. Athgal. Af. Athelgal. Af. Athergal. Athergal. No, Athergal. Athergal. Earl Athergal. Yeah, that's... that's not much better. I feel like he would have figured that one out. I don't out. think he no. would have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ragnar wants to meet <laughs> Earl Athergal. And... That's the new title of this episode. <laughs> Earl Athergal comes to the rescue. Rollo tells Siggy this when they're in their house. So, of course, we know that means Horg's probably going to find out pretty quickly. And then uh, we get the sex scene that we've been waiting for with Rollo and Siggy all this time, but it's ruined because he asks her why she sleeps with Horik and threatens her during this sex scene, and I was disappointed. I agree. This was not the right time to bring up this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> there are good times and there are bad times this was a bad time this is really bad pillow talk Rolo needs to go to some sort of pillow talk training <laughs> pillow talk should not include threats uh, when she says that she's doing it all for him she doesn't really explain what she means by that I mean I guess it's kind of obvious but it, still I have issues with that whole situation well and also I'm totally on board with Rolo saying, I don't care if that's why you're doing it. Stop! <laughs> yep. When he says, what can he do for me that my brother cannot do? Well, it also, it'd be one thing if it was like a indecent proposal where they both agreed to it, but he had no idea this was happening. Yeah, and he's known for a while, I think. Yeah, well, yeah, since Floki told him. Because <laughs> he can't true. keep a secret. But it'd be one thing if Rolo <laughs> and Siggy had sat down and said... This is the best plan for both of our futures to be good. That's not what happened. Though, as weird as it is for me to say this, I feel like he has more respect for her than to ever ask her to do that. Rolo wasn't the pinnacle of respect for women here, but even he wouldn't do what Horik's been doing. Yeah, I agree that Rolo wouldn't ask her to do that, and, and I don't think that the two of them would have ever come to an agreement that this was something that they wanted to do. So... I think that that would be the only way that Rolla wouldn't have, like, a leg to stand on. But I think he totally has a valid, he has a valid complaint that his wife yeah. is sleeping with somebody else. Is it his wife? I think she's called him husband. Hasn't she? I don't think she has. All right, well, okay, significant other, life partner, co-applicant on mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Rolo, and this is my co-applicant, Siggy. <laughs> I feel like she'd have the better I think situation. that's probably true, too. <laughs> I suppose. We get back to Horik and Borg. And Horik says that he will set Borg free after all. There are people there who will help him, since they only pretend to be loyal to Ragnar. Who do you think he's talking about? I don't about? think he's talking about anyway, because he didn't set him free. <laughs> that's true. But why would he say that if it... I don't understand why he ever even went to see him if he wasn't going to go... If he wasn't going to set him free. Why did he say he was going to if he wasn't going to? These are all excellent oh my questions. God, Horik, he's just talking out his backside. I don't know if he thought maybe, like, the Borg would have a really great idea that he would actually like. But then when he went and the Borg was like, no, just set me free. We'll kill Ragnar. And Horik was like, you're crazy. I don't know why he said he was going to set him free when I don't think he ever planned on it. Ragnar is in the tub 
having a nice bath next to his son because he's sitting in the great hall having a bath. It's really weird. We get a little bit of exposition here. The convenient question from Bjorn asking what a blood eagle is. And Ragnar seems to really savor the explanation of it. So the offender kneels. Their back is opened up with knives. The ribs are chopped away from their spine with axes. And then from those wounds, they pull out their lungs and lay them on the shoulders so they look like the folded wings of an eagle. And then the person just has to wait until they die. If they manage to do all this in silence, they get to go to Valhalla. If they don't, they're screwed. So this is terrible. It's not that Borg went to it willingly, but he was resigned to it by the time he got to that point, which is... A lot to hold up to, to not scream so you can go to Valhalla. That's. I kind of thought that when Bjorn went to see him, he was going to give him poison. I thought he was going to give him a knife the first time I saw it. And of course, that would have been a terrible idea because he could have gotten Bjorn. But yeah, I thought he was going to give him a way to kill himself. I didn't think Bjorn was going to kill him. I thought he was going to give him a way out. And uh, sadly, that was not the case. This episode would have been very different. So gross. So much blood. So messy. Yeah. Torsten announces that Earl Ingstad is waiting in the woods. He would not enter the Great Hall, (laughs) Torsten is saying. He's really putting the emphasis on the he, and Ragnar does not pick it up at all. Ragnar goes out to the woods and sees a man, thinking he's the Earl. And then Lagertha comes out from behind a tree, looking smug as hell. Which I think was a really good look on her. She definitely deserved it at this point. How happy were you that she ended up becoming the Earl? Because you were waiting to see what happened last time. I felt very self-satisfied. Just like Lagertha. Yes. She and I were having the same emotions. (laughs) Because she took her rightful and deserved place as the Earl-S. Not earless, which is how it looks (laughs) written, (laughs) but Earl-S. Ragnar is really amused by this. He said, you bear a strong resemblance to my ex-wife. He just kept walking his horse in circles around her horse while he talked. Mm -hmm. I was actually surprised you didn't pick the We Are Equals from Lagertha. That would have been a good one, too. So he accepts her alliance, and they are going to eventually go to England together. Mm -hmm. And she is looking forward to it. She is. Later we see Lagertha training in the yard with a lot of shield maidens. And Aslog says that she likes Lagertha, and she'd rather be her since she's so formidable. That's very valid, Aslog. Because Lagertha's the best. Everybody knows that. (laughs) Yeah. Ragnar is very confused about everything that is happening right now. The gods are playing a trick on him. If there's one thing I can say about Ragnar is that he does not understand women in general. He really doesn't. No. I mean, I hate usually saying things like that because it's such a generalization. But it's so consistent for Ragnar that every woman... He has been involved with so far. He's not. But good you know, at the here's the good thing about Ragnar too is that he acknowledges it and also can make fun of himself about it. Yeah. You know, he he realizes that he's so out of his depth when it comes to dealing with the women. So at least he's yeah. self aware. <laughs> Get to the time for the blood eagle. The last what seven so minutes of the episode terrible. is is all of this. Yeah, it dragged on. I seriously on. had to cover my eyes, and I just left a tiny little bit of my fingers open so I could read the closed captioning <laughs> just to make sure I didn't miss anything important. <laughs> well, then I'm going to have to tell you how everybody reacted and how this all went. So, Borg, somebody comes in to unchain him, and he thinks it's Hork at first coming to free him. Realizes as he goes outside, he's been betrayed. He kind of stumbles into the courtyard, sees everybody gathered around this platform Ragnar standing on in white robes and everyone is silent which for me made it more ominous than if people were cheering or booing or something there's obviously no way out he just has to he's got to take it he goes up and like a trooper he walks up gives his cloak to his wife puts the skull of his first wife on the stump there was this weird moment for a second where for me Borg I don't know exactly why he's always looked small compared to all the other viking men i don't know if it's just because he's he's not big and bulky like a lot of the guys but when he stood next to ragnar it looked like they were the same height and it it was jarring for me to see that because i've always imagined him as much smaller and he looked so pathetic i i felt bad for him and i feel like that was 
was an overreaction on Ragnar's part. Ah, uh, the blood eagle. Yeah, because the whole thing that started it was that the Borg got betrayed. I mean, he got kicked out of the deal. Right. So he got mad and took his revenge. He didn't actually kill any of Ragnar's family. And he could have. So I can understand Ragnar wanting to kill him, you know, as payment for his crimes. But I feel like this whole ceremony <laughs> was overkill. <laughs> uh, <gasps> oh, I knew it was coming out and I just had to. Yeah. Dun, but, dun. I mean, do you know what I mean? I mean, this guy didn't go murder 15 babies. You know what I mean? I mean, this was like a big overreaction. I think there might have been a couple of reasons for this besides besides the attack on Kattegat. I think one of them was that it was basically an attack on his family. They had to escape, but you know, he didn't know they would they would get out. So he probably would have killed them if he had been there. And for Ragnar, his family is the most important right. thing. His children. And two, I think that this was also to really solidify his power. You know, he's he's famous for traveling to the West. He's famous for ascending to earldom so quickly and easily, really. And if you're just some random earl from some other place and you want to take over, if you hear that the last person who tried to take over Katziat and oust Ragnar was bloody eagled, you're going to rethink your your plan. This could have also been some posturing for Horik, too. Well, and I was thinking, if I were Horik and I saw that happen, <laughs> I'd be like, here's my crown, dude. Just here, just take it. I'm fine. It's good. And Ragnar showed no, I mean, we got all different kinds of reactions. Ragnar never seemed disgusted. He never stopped like he needed to have a second. He was very deliberate and determined in this whole blood eagle situation. I wouldn't say he seemed like he was enjoying it, but there was, there was no pause to indicate he didn't like what he was doing either. Yeah, it was really disturbing. Which makes him seem scarier. Exactly. Because... Imagine your ass log right now. This this is your husband, the man that you've married, that you sleep with, that is the father of your children, and he's having no issue whatsoever breaking a guy's ribs completely apart, opening his back, and pulling his lungs yeah. out. Well, an ass log called Lagertha formidable, and Ragnar is just as formidable. Ragnar is, like, scary. Lagertha at least has emotions. Yeah. I mean... And I don't know if Ragnar was acting that way because he was trying to avoid showing emotion or if he actually didn't have an emotion. I think that he often hides his emotion and sometimes they show it explicitly when he turns away and his face changes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this one, they didn't give us any idea. Right. Though he walked away immediately after, so maybe. But I mean, even somebody that doesn't have emotions would want to get away from that because it's just disgusting. Though, you know, thinking back to when he was in the bath telling Bjorn about the bloody goal, and I said he had seemed to, to really savor the explanation. Mm -hmm. When he finished and he turned away, his face did change then. And he seemed a lot less excited than he had a second before about the whole thing. Maybe he felt like it was really necessary for the revenge against... Borg and for his standing, you know, with people yeah. in surrounding areas, but also he didn't want to do it. Yeah. He thought that it needed to be done, but he didn't want to do it. But he was never going to show anybody else that. Of course not. Not even not. Rolo. No. When he was talking about getting the revenge. Yeah. So the Borg kneels down, totally willing, and Ragnar begins the bloody goal. We see even blood dropping on the skull, which was very dramatic image. So some people, most of the people really were watching pretty stoically for most of the time. Bjorn, I, I was a little disturbed at Bjorn's reaction. He seemed to relish it almost and then gave this kind of like quarter smile when he was watching. So that just makes you think that he has some of his dad in him as far as brutality goes. Oh, I think he definitely does. Torvi just straight out fainted. Some people looked disgusted. Torsten looked horrified, really. Like he didn't want to look away, but no one was going to look away. Until we get to... God, it was so bad. When the ribs started being pulled apart, then Siggy and Aslog both looked away at that point. Horik was just watching. He didn't seem to have any 
reaction or emotion at all. So did everybody have to go watch this or did they want to? Because I don't know. I would have just stayed home. Well, it's like a lot of the executions in Middle Ages. I mean, it was it was an event. I would have stayed home for that, too. I don't understand the attraction to watching an execution. I guess in some ways it's giving the victim respect. You have to go through this. I will watch this. I mean, it's pretty horrible. They're pulling his insides out while he's still alive. It really is How terrible. could anybody watch that and not yeah. pass out? I think I would have passed out. I sure. probably would have thrown up. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, Ragnar notices that, which everyone notices, notices, I guess there's an eagle watching. And reminded me of the, the seer's prophecy that um, an eagle hovers over you, but you yourself are the eagle. And he became the eagle. He gets his lungs out and then he dies. He managed to make it through without screaming. So he gets to go to Valhalla. According to whatever they came up with <laughs> when they decided that's how things worked. They do this um, pull away shot from above showing his back. And then you can see where the ribs have been pulled out. And it's just so brutal. It was pretty bad. They, they lingered on it for a long time. So that was the episode. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about season two, episode eight called Boneless. Boneless? Uh-huh. Without bones. I will tell you now, you were never going to be able to predict why it's I called Boneless. I don't know that I could even try. I would be shocked. Is it about jelly? How did you know? Jellyfish don't have bones. There's a jellyfish invasion. <laughs> Maybe it's boneless because um, there are no... Oh, I've got nothing. All right, Rosanna, what's your top three category this week? I'm going to cover the top three lighter moments of the episode. Really? As in pretty much everything that wasn't somebody getting the lungs ripped out of their open back. <laughs> Number one, I thought it was adorable and sweet and cute when Floki and Bjorn were talking about women. Oh, yes. I loved how Floki was talking to Bjorn. I love the kiss on the forehead. I love that Floki is this really cool uncle figure for Bjorn. Yeah. And that they, even after Bjorn's been gone for so long, they still have this relationship. I just, it's great. I love that part. The second lighter moment was Floki and Helga's wedding. Yeah. It was lovely and celebratory and sweet and just a nice wedding and a nice bright spot yeah. in a rough episode. It was literally bright. A lot of the episode was so dark. Yes, that's true. That's true. Being outside in the sun with the water and stuff. And mm -hmm. it was just, a, it was a pretty scene. It was a joyful scene. It was nice. And then number three, of course, is <laughs> Lagertha and Ragnar and their adorable horse top banter. <laughs> So cute. So what are your predictions for the next episode and the rest of the season? There are three episodes left for this season. Where do you think it's going now that Borg has been conquered? I think there's going to be some conflict with Horik. How's that going to go? I think it's not going to go very well for Horik. I think if he's smart, he won't push it because Ragnar just filleted some guy. So You think he's smart? Do I think Horik's smart? No. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> at all. We've discussed it before. He does seem to have a, a, not the greatest track record and decisions. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Hork got killed this season. By whom? Maybe by Ragnar or maybe in a fight with Ragnar's people. I don't know. Because oh. both of them don't have a lot of people left. So that's hard to say. Mm -hmm. But I think if Hork tries to take Ragnar on, he's going to lose. And Ragnar doesn't leave losers. Alive. And he was talking about people with loyalty that was no longer with Ragnar. Well, do you think any of that might come into play? He might try to get people on his side, like secret whisper. Hey, are you going to vote Ragnar? Or are you going <laughs> to vote Hork? I don't know. Maybe. Is this election with Reese Witherspoon? Exactly. Just campaigning. And you know, Hork said that he's going to get his revenge against yeah. Eckbert. But I just feel like that was just him. I feel like that was just all talk. I mean, I think he wants revenge, but if that's not what Ragnar wants to do, then I think Hork's out of luck. He's going to have to go along with kind of what Lagertha wants because she's the one coming in with the supplies uh, they need, the people and yeah. the ships. 
So if Ragnar tells Lagertha, hey, this is how it needs to go, and Lagertha agrees, then it's two against one. Horik's got no say. Yeah. So. Well, he has one ship and, like, ten guys. Yeah, I mean, he's in a really poor position to try to negotiate, you know, where they're going, who they're fighting, how they're going to do it. I do expect Lagertha and Bjorn and Ragnar to go to England in the next episode or before the end of the season. Sounds like they're probably going to fight with a combination of Eckbert and Ayla's troops because they'll be joined now. So how do you think the Vikings versus the English will, how do you think that's going to go? Well, at first the Vikings did really well fighting the English, but I worry now the English know more about them, Ah. that it's not going to be such a lopsided fight. And Ragnar seems to still want a settlement there. Okay. (sighs) Okay. We still have this whole prophecy about Bjorn. We know that Ekbert's son married Ayla's daughter, but do we know if Ekbert has a daughter? So maybe if Ragnar marries his son to Ekbert's daughter, Ekbert will let Ragnar colonize part of England. Okay. I don't feel really strongly about that theory. (laughs) Um... (laughs) I mean, they're Vikings. I think there's going to be more fighting, honestly. I think Siggy would be relieved if Horik died or went to England and never came back uh, to get her out of this mess that she's put herself in. She might be pretty pissed that it was all well, for nothing. But now she's got to the point where she can't say no to anything. That's true. So she has to do yeah. everything he says. That's the whole reason she slept with his son is because she's already gotten so far into it. Well, and also, I think if Siggy's smart, which I think she is... She will not say no to Horik because he has enough of a position to make her life way more uncomfortable. Either taking it out directly on her or taking it out on Rolo, which is the opposite of what she was trying to do in the first place. So what about Lagertha? She's an Earl now. What do you think that means for her future? I think it means that she has a lot of support. I think that the people in her territory like her. And want to support her and want to go along with her because they've met her. (laughs) And she's amazing. (laughs) So I think that gives her a fair amount of power, especially because it sounds like her territory is fairly rich. If she's got a bunch of ships and a bunch of men. So it seems like she's in kind of a good position. I would be surprised if she didn't decide to somehow stay in Kattegat or live there part of the time. Or move to... I don't know what she's going to do, but I know that she doesn't want to be away from Bjorn. So I feel like wherever Bjorn Uh, goes, she's going to try to find a way to make that work for her to be with him, too. I don't know how she's going to do that and still be able to rule her territory unless she puts somebody else in charge in her absence. Well, we haven't really met anybody else from there. Well, the guy that cut off the Earl's head. Yeah. What about Aslog and the monster baby she's expecting to have well she's she's gonna give birth to a monster <laughs> and uh <laughs> a real serpent this time both of his pupils will be snakes so it'll be even weirder and she'll be like ah i already used snake in the eye now what am i gonna call this one i mean does she mean monster like the baby is gonna be an actual literal monster or does she mean he's just gonna be like the worst behaved kid out of all know. of the kids this one's a monster <laughs> ragnar he's yours also, is she incapable of birthing daughters? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Just keeps popping out sons. <laughs> Maybe this one will be a daughter. So, the girl from Hemlock Grove? Oh, I like her. I liked her, too. I actually saw that actress in something else, and it took me forever to figure out that's who it was, because her face was the same on both sides. Also, she's, like, two feet shorter. There's that. <laughs> Man, that show is so weird listeners if you haven't watched Hemlock Grove which probably none of you have because it did not do super well on Netflix it's a Netflix original show yeah it was weird it was weird what about Rolo I think Rolo's going wherever Ragnar's going if Ragnar will let him that seems like a pretty likely choice at this point since he told him about the the Borg attack Ragnar sent Rolo to get the Borg yeah he led that whole mission yeah, so I think that that probably was enough for Ragnar to say, all right, buddy, come on, we're going to go raid, and you're allowed to come this time. Any other predictions? Ooh, what about Bjorn and Thorin? Is he going to keep pining after her? She's going to keep trying to get him to leave her alone? I hope he just gives up on her when he goes uh, to England, just yeah. moves on. She's obviously not interested, dude. He's very whiny about the whole thing. 
Now it's time for Cheek of the Week, where we talk about something awesome. My Cheek this week is the Showers Pass Atlas Jacket. Really any jacket they have. So Showers Pass is this, it's actually a local company. but I mean, they sell everywhere on their website. They make bicycling gear, mainly jackets. They have some, some other stuff as well. But their jackets are amazing. I think they're all waterproof, which I'm in Portland. There's a lot of rain here. And so if you're going to be biking, you definitely need some waterproof gear. But I got this, this jacket they just came out with, the Atlas jacket. And it is just, it's so rad. The main jacket is black and it has reflective lines on it, but the lines are all in a kind of map line format, like streets and, and rivers and bridges and things. And it's based on an amalgam of Portland and I think Vancouver and New York and San Francisco and like I think seven different cities maps that they kind of mixed together. And so when you wear the jacket just during the day, it just looks like a black jacket with a lot of really interesting kind of dark green lines on them. But when lights hit you, they all reflect and it's super bright, which makes you a lot safer when you're biking and even just like walking at night. But I ended up um, being able to replace three jackets with it because I can wear it as a regular jacket, just kind of a light jacket to walk around in. I can wear it as a biking jacket and I can wear it as a raincoat. So now I get to wear this awesome, pretty coat. And Rosanna, you've even seen it. Super cute. Showers Pass uh, has given us a 10% off with your first purchase code for you all listeners. So if you go to showerspass.com, you can use the code CHEEKY10 at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase with them. I recommend their jacket, really any jacket that they have. So Rosanna, what's your cheek this week? My cheek this week is an author and two of his books. His name is Peter Kleins. And the books that he has written that I've read, he's he's written more books than just these two. But these two are, they're not a series. One's not a sequel to the other, but they're in the same universe. Oh, like the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett. So there are two of them right now. One of them is called 14, and the other one is called The Fold. I actually bought them from Audible. I listened to them as audiobooks, and they're very good audiobooks. I'm sure they're fine if you read them to yourself also. 14 is about a guy that moves into this apartment building, and all these weird things are happening in his apartment, in other people's apartments, and he's trying to figure out what's going on there. And then The Fold is about a machine that folds the dimension so you can teleport. It's super, super cool. And it's not so sci-fi that it feels like you're reading a sci-fi book. It's like a book about some people that happen to do sci-fi stuff. They're very, very good books, very entertaining. And unlike any other books I've read before, which I love finding a book that I don't know what's going to happen, and I didn't in these So listeners, you can visit our website and find out about all of our Cheeks of the Week. Learn about our other podcasts and send us questions and feedback. And you can also support the show with our Amazon affiliate link at somethingcheekypodcast.com slash Amazon. That's our episode. Please leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at somecheek and facebook.com slash somecheek. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Da 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 da